Hey gang, Zippo. I had a request here a while back from uh, Ben, uh, 23 Mr. Cowboys, and I kind of shot him down and I got to thinking uh, about why I shot him down on, on doing a video on my Zippos. And uh, the no, no real easy way to put it. Uh, my collection used to round out between 250 300 lighters. I had some very valuable lighters. Uh, in fact, one that uh, sold for over $757 to be exact. Um, I have been appraising Zippos for many, many years. Uh, my name, Zippo Varga, uh, obviously is a derivative of uh, Zippo Lighters and George E. Blaisdell's advertising prowess uh, in hiring a, uh, an artist to do pinup girl portraits holding the lighters. Uh, Wendy uh, is one of the girls. Um, but his name was Varga, so that's where the Varga comes from in my name. Um, I, in 1996, I had a water skiing accident, and that water skiing accident uh, ultimately uh, is what caused the onset of me becoming disabled. I fought the doctors and their advice to retire at that time in 1996. Um, I continued to work uh, up through uh, 2005. Um, then my mind finally wrapped around the whole concept that there was no way that my body could function well enough to provide for my home, for my family, uh, and whatnot. And having to sell off a lot of my lighters while I was down and out, I was down and out for 18 months uh, during the time that, uh, um, and, and during the time I was recovering from a water skiing accident, and. During that 18 months, I had to sell a lot of my collection. Uh, I have not actively been collecting now since then, since I uh, was essentially forced to sell my collection. Um, but, because of my namesake and a number of good friends that I have and people understanding, uh, my collection has grown uh, little by little. Of course, there were a few lighters that I refused to get rid of, and they had only sentimental value to me. They had no real real value. So, all that was well and good. So, Ben, buddy, this is for you. Uh, I apologize for not coming forth and explaining why I didn't want to do a zip my Zippo collection video uh, when you asked for it initially. But here it is now. Uh, I'm going to break it up into uh, some different parts because there's a lot of interesting factoids uh, about Zippo and George E. Blaisdell uh, when the lighters came into fruition, uh, when the patent was uh, finally uh, given in 1935, when the first Zippo lighter was made, uh, some mistakes that Zippo themselves have made in uh, their re-releases -release, re of replicas of the past lighters. Uh, different things to look for when you're collecting. There are, there's a lot of venues uh, when it comes to your particular taste. It's just like in collecting knives. You can collect what appeals to you. You can do that also with Zippo lighters. There are so many different areas that include Zippo lighters. <clears throat> for example, uh, in the movies, if Zippo was a live person. Zippo would have Zippo lighter. Zippo lighters would have been in more movies than any other actor or actress in the history of movie making. That's how often Zippo lighters uh, are have have been in. <coughs> excuse me, have been in videos or have been in movies, which is pretty cool and TV shows and whatnot. Uh, I remember. Uh, one thing in particular, uh, Luke Perry in 90210, the old original show, he uh, used his lighter, uh, lit it, set it on the counter, uh, 
woke up the next morning, closed his lighter and put it in his pocket. Obviously he burned it until it ran out of fluid, but um, just because the Zippo lighter is out of fluid doesn't mean that that lighter is not a physical part of a person. People grow absolute attachments to their lighters. Uh, their lighters tell so many stories and mine are no exception. Um, some of the ones that I've kept absolutely have their story. There's no amount of money that can buy them from me. They are constant reminders of good times in my past. They're constant reminders of just different eras, diff different, uh, different stages in my life. Um, this first video it, it is just for Ben, <clears throat> just to show what I've got in the way of the Zippo collection. Um, I'm kind of hiding the ashtray back here, as you can see. Zippo ashtray that sits right by my bedside uh, on my nightstand. Of course, my phone never fails to go off when I'm trying to do a video. <laughs> uh, Zippo advertising memorabilia uh, spans a pretty wide variety. In fact, Zippo even at one point in time had a balm uh, <laughs> for your skin, uh, skin balm which uh, thought it was just kind of off the wall and neat and interesting. Um, but my Zippo lighters, what, where, when, and why. Real quick, little, real quick overview here. Um, right here, this was the first Zippo that uh, I purchased for myself. Uh, I purchased a number of Zippos uh, for other people and I was working at a uh, kiosk in the mall that did engravings and I was the uh, engraver at the particular store. It was all before computers, everything was all hand done. And uh, the first lighter that I, I actually bought and engraved was uh, this slim Zippo right there. And this is a 1982. I don't know how well you can see that there. but. That's E.T. on the lighter. I made that for my mother and on the back says number one mom. And then at the time she was married to uh, my stepdad, uh, Jim. So I had his initials and her initials over here. So there's a little bit of my engraving talents there. Uh, then the lighter next to it, she said that she enjoyed uh, Scrimshaw. We've got a number of uh, vintage scrimshaw pieces around the house, so I bought her a uh, slim Zippo with a, uh, let's see, what it's got the whale on it, whale tail in the ship, and guys in a rowboat, and clouds above, blank on the back, but you can uh, tell by the case, of, uh, tell by the condition of the case, well used lighter, and it's still in perfect working order. Uh, so the arthritis got so bad in her hand she couldn't operate the lighter anymore. Um, so I've got those two. And this one's 1986. Uh, and I put my own personal touch on this. 1986 is the first release of the matte finish. And you can barely see it here. But uh, of course I got my lighting all screwed up. Let's see. You can see here it says Zippo. And then. Uh, it's got my name and what I did was I cleaned the matte finish off of the sides and then kind of picture framed it around here and cleaned the edges and polished it all. Uh, Zippos were really infamous uh, throughout war times. They were actually a standard military issue in some of the wars and uh, a lot of them are at the Zippo Case Museum and they're essentially trench art. Uh, there's trench art knives, trench art lighters, trench art ashtrays, you know, taking artillery shells, making lighters out of artillery shells, just all kinds. You name it. The guys down the trenches are, you know, in there for four or five days at a time, weeks at a time. They gotta have something to do. Well, they get their knives out and get to work. So, uh, anyway, <coughs> going on uh, about just uh, 
the lighters that um, have a meaning to me or have a meaning to my mother. Uh, this one here is uh, this was a series that was done, uh, and of course, has Barrett Smythe. That's it. Sorry, guys. Barrett Smythe. Uh, was hired, <coughs> excuse me, hired as an artist to do an endangered species series, and uh, he did uh, the blue whale. There was a number of others that were involved in this series. This is a mint and unfired lighter uh, from back in the 1990s, early 1990s. Uh, this is also a Barrett Smythe design. This is actually in pewter. It's embossed and then glued onto the face of a chrome zip, high polished chrome zip lighter. Uh, some of the other lighters that uh, have uh, personal meaning that will never go away are this one. This was given to me recently. It's a 1941 replica. It was given to me recently by uh, my daughter's boyfriend, Kyle. Great guy. Uh, love him like a son. Um, but uh, the uh, enduring flame of friendship is uh, the same underneath my name here which I thought was pretty cool. Going on, uh, this eagle lighter here, uh, the back of it reads, Take me as I am and love me for me it was given to me by a very good friend of mine, uh, Amy. And she will ever, forever be my sister. Um, just one of the biggest hearts of, of, any, of any person that I've ever met. So that's where that one came from. Uh, going over to the cigarette lighter cases that I've got sitting over here. This particular one. I was working uh, as a bartender and one of my regular customers came in often. And this is the case that I carry all the time. And I've been carrying this case since, oh lord, I can't tell you how long. I'll give you an idea. It used to say Zippo crossed here. As you can see by this one that has part of it on there. It was embossed Zippo across there and also on the button. Well, that's all wore out. Uh, this and uh, I cut the finger groove in it. This case originally was solid on the bottom. Made it difficult to get the lighter out, so I put the finger release on there. I'd be riding down the road on my Harley. I'd lock my throttle down, reach over and grab my lighter and head down the road 50 miles an hour. I never worried about my Zippo lighting so that I could light my cigarette while I was on the fly. But, uh, that uh, is the case that I always use. But anyway, back to this one. <coughs> uh, I had always mentioned to him that I thought that was a pretty cool uh, case, and I asked him who made it for him. And uh, just a leather worker buddy of his that made saddlebags and, and leather adornments for uh, Harleys threw it together for him one afternoon. And um, I came into work one day and, you uh, know, little manila envelope was a letter uh, telling me that uh, he had moved to another state and this was in there and he said that he wanted me to have it as a, as a reminder of him. Also in the envelope was a Harley, uh, Harley t-shirt which I still have and these are, I'll never get rid of this and I carried this for a while but I didn't want to wear it out any more than it was already wore out so that uh, and as you can see, this one's also got the thumb hole in the bottom. And uh, he did that to his case after he saw how I customized my case. But with his snap being slow, he couldn't come up so high. But anyway, same deal there. Hope you get the lighter out. But uh, this is one I, I no longer carry, but we'll never get rid of. Um, so it kind of shows you uh, a Zippo is not just a means to light a candle or to light your cigarette or uh, to light your path or uh, what have you. A, a Zippo lighter can have uh, incredible meaning. Uh, it can be a life-saving device. It may, uh, many Zippos have been life-saving devices. Um, but at any rate, Ben, buddy, this one's for you. And I apologize for not uh, sucking up my uh, I don't even know what what a good phrase would be for it. Um, just I guess sucking up my courage and and putting the past in the past and going ahead with uh, making the video, even though my collection isn't near what it used to be.
So this is what we got. Uh, there's some things that I've left out uh, that I didn't pull together, but I'll tell you real quick. This is a Zippo letter opener, a Zippo right there. I've got a Zippo. Was that even in the picture? Yeah, it's in there. Okay. It's a Zippo money clip. And everybody, you can purchase Zippo wicks and trademark gold Zippo flints. And uh, Ronson, by the way, is now also owned by Zippo, in case anybody didn't know. And also, uh, Case Knives, uh, WR Case and Sons, is also now owned by uh, Zippo. I believe 2003 was when they purchased. Let me, let me look. Let me check here real quick. Make sure I'm right. Excuse me. 1993 was when uh, Zippo bought Case Knives. So, now Case Knives are also made in Bradford, Pennsylvania um, by Zippo Manufacturing. Um, other things. Now this is actually, I think, in China or Japan, something like that. But it is licensed and endorsed. This is a fuel tank. Uh, it carries enough fuel to fill one standard Zippo lighter and a little bit of extra. It comes with a Zippo st stamped uh, ring with a groove in it so you can undo the screw for the flint and then this is a piece of rubber that will hold your Zippo flint. So it's all right there. You take the top lid off, so then you take this cap off and this is then the cap has the, the seal inside the lid to keep everything from evaporating there. And then, I don't know how well it can be seen, but there's a tiny little hole here. You just put that hole to the top when you're pouring your Zippo fluid in and the fluid will run into your uh, reservoir on your lighter insert and uh, keep your lighters full. But it will never evaporate out of here. Then to fill it, if you don't have to put it in a tiny little hole. This unscrews from the, the base. So you know, I'll go ahead and do it here real quick. It is full of fluid, so let me get my hand there we go. Okay. I'm going to show you the whole thing comes off there. there. And I've got it about two thirds of the way full, and that's the way they say to do it, not to fill it completely full, because it'll defeat the purpose of the air bubble. You have to have some room to, for that air bubble to work, because the hole's so small. But there you go. That's that. Get the cap back on there. And sitting right beside it is a what's called a permanent match. They've been around for years and years and years, but Zippo went ahead and endorsed. Again, Chinese made, uh, but it's a permanent match. It's just got wick material on either side and then a striker and your flint bar. And you just flick it like that. There you go. And put it out. Stick it back in there and tighten it back down. So that's that. Uh, these are little Zippo stands, which are kind of cool. And they've got magnets in them. I don't know if you can see that, where it kind of wants to hang on to it, but it helps. You can just essentially drop your Zippo into it and it'll orient it and hold it in place. And that's a nice old, uh, uh, never been used Venetian uh, Zippo classic design. But anyway, these bases can, can be bought pretty readily. Uh, this is a handy light. Uh, you could buy just the base, or you could buy a ready made handy light. Drill a hole in the bottom of any canned base lighter, which uh, when I say canned, the bottom of it's indented instead of being, let's see, like this 1941. If you look at the base of it, it's completely flat. It wouldn't work with this base. And the reason um, is just because the base is designed to work with the canned uh, type lighters. So it fits in there. But um, it just got out. I don't know how it can be seen well enough or not. Let's get the old. ITP Polestar out here and flash it in there so you guys can see that. Screw down in there. But a little Allen wrench so you can put your any light, your favorite lighter uh, on a stand. They no longer make the handy light Zippos. So any that you can find, uh, they're starting to go up in value on eBay. Uh, used to be able to pick them up pretty much for retail, but since I stopped making them, uh, you're getting a little harder, obviously. 
uh, something else that they are no longer providing you. I believe you can still buy them at the Case Museum and Case Store, but that would be, I'm going to read this for you, is the cent never spent for a Zippo repair. To re excuse me. The cent never spent to repair a Zippo lighter. And then on the other side is uh, good old Abe Lincoln. And it comes attached to a card on a beaded chain. These are also very collectible. And there are older versions that, uh, obviously this one's from ZippoClick.com. Um, so this is a newer one. Uh, the older ones, I've seen just the card and the penny go for crazy money. Crazy money. Let's see, what else does Zippo offer? Got the money clip. Zippo money clip, I think I mentioned that. A Zippo tape measure. And these can sort of be dated. Not, not, not greatly, but sort of be dated. Um, just because before they started with the metric here in the U.S., these were being made and only had inches in them. This one obviously has the inches and the uh, uh, millimeters metric system on there. So there's a Zippo tape measure and sitting right beside it. Now, this is before Zippo case, Zippo and case married. Um, this was the hundredth anniversary for case, and they hired Zippo to make uh, their 100 year anniversary in a magnifying glass. It says 1889 to 1989. I got really lucky and I found this thing in, in amazing condition with 100% of the enamel intact. It does not even appear to have been used. And uh, they're kind of neat in the way that they work. Um, I'll show you here. It's got uh, you just pull on the bottom, there's your magnifying lenses, okay? I say lenses, there are two. You can slide one of them up to reduce the power by half, which is kind of cool, depending on how much magnification power you need. And this uh, essentially is just the lid of any of your regular Zippo that's just been cut a little longer, and it's been inserted in there, and there's a plastic insert on either side that's riveted on either side to hold everything in place. Um, these were made, pillboxes were made, the pillboxes are collectible. Like I said, the tape measures were made. Some items that I don't have on the table that were also made were, <coughs> excuse me, just some other things that were made. Uh, a lockback knife was made, an early, um, an early butane lighter. This is the late model butane lighter, Zippo Blue. Um, Lord, just a myriad of things that were made by Zippo. But you can go on their website and you can literally spend hours in there reading about the history. And I've got this video for you, Ben, hitting 23 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out. This will be the only one that I'll do uh, today. And I'll try to do a mini-series on uh, some of the interesting factoids of Zippo uh, as time allows. So, Ben, buddy, there you go. There's a little bit of uh, history on my Zippos, what I own, what I've kept. Um, and how near and dear uh, Zippo lighters are to me. Uh, it's not just a not just a name. It's a, it, it's a passion that I've had since obviously 1982 was a couple of years ago. We're looking at 30 years ago. Boy, I'm getting old. <laughs> All right, guys. This is Zippo. Ben, love you, brother. Later. I'm out.